So we left off here with our strand of mRNA leaving the nucleus and going out into the cytoplasm. And when it gets to the cytoplasm, it's going to bind with a ribosome. The ribosome is going to read it, translate it into a strand of amino acids. How in the world does that happen? Here's the thing. There are 20 amino acids in nature. You don't need to know the names of all of them. You just need to know that there are 20. There are four nucleotides in RNA. RNA is essentially a language with only four letters, A, U, C, and G. So now we have to make 20 words with a language that only has four letters in it. And in order to do that, we're going to make words that are always three letters long. We call the words codons. So each amino acid is coded by a group of three nucleotides in a specific order, and that is called a codon. The next slide is going to make your head hurt. It's not hard once you realize what it's instructing, okay? And you will get used to it and you'll be like, yeah, no problem. Ouch. Okay. This is the table called the universal RNA translation table. You absolutely positively do not need to memorize this. No one ever has in the history of genetics. All you need to do is know how to read it. Ah, okay. On an exam, this will be given to you. So just know how to use it. So remember, our RNA is going to be read in three letter sets. So the first letter or the first base in the codon uh, makes the rows. So notice that everything in this row starts with a U. Everything in this row starts with a C. Okay. Everything in this row starts with an A. Everything here starts with a G. Okay. Then we go to the columns. The columns are the second base of the codon. So here we have the second letter is a U. So for everything in this square, the first letter is a U and the second letter is a U. For everything here, the first letter is a U, the second letter is a C. So if you have a codon that is GCA, you would start with G and go across to C. And then there are four codons in that box. Um, and this, the smaller rows are the third letters of the codon. Okay. Now what's cool, notice, regardless of what the third letter is, they all code for alanine in this box. GC, regardless of what the third letter is, it codes for the um, amino acid alanine. Because remember, there are only 20 amino acids in nature, but if you have a four letter alphabet with three letters in each word, you actually get 64 different possibilities. So there is a lot of uh, duplication in this table. What's cool about that is that if there is some mistake in copying DNA, either during DNA duplication prior to mitosis or meiosis, or during transcription, when RNA polymerase makes a complementary copy of the DNA. In either of those processes, if there is a mistake, most of the time it's a meaningless mistake. It doesn't change anything because so many of the codons have the same letter in spot three and code for the same protein. So we can make mistakes in this third letter and not affect the phenotype at all. So you think of mutations, we usually think of mutations as bad things, right? You're a mutant, so you have this weird characteristic. But we're all mutation mutants, we're all full of mutations, and most of those mutations, a mutation is just a change in the DNA. Most of them make no change whatsoever because there's all this redundancy in the system. That's kind of cool, honestly, if you think about it. 
Okay, so how do we do this? Imagine that you are a little ribosome, okay? You are going to bind to a strand of DNA. Here we are, we have a strand of DNA. And the first thing you need to know, where do I start? You don't start at the beginning because remember, the, um, the gene got a cap put on it. You don't need to make the cap. That's not part of the protein. So you got to look for where to start. And where you start is at this cleverly named start codon. I know. Yeah. AUG is the start codon. It is always the start codon in every protein in nature. Every polypeptide in nature starts with AUG, which is the amino acid methionine. Sorry, the polypeptides start with methionine. They always start with methionine. AUG codes for methionine. Methionine is one of the weird ones, actually the weird one, in that um, it, methionine and tryptophan are the only two that have just one codon that codes for them. It's just weird, right? Okay, so you're an RNA. The first thing you look for is the AUG. Don't start at the beginning, start at the start codon. So you read along, you're like, la, 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 AUG. Now notice there were four letters ahead of this. You're not reading codons until you get to AUG, okay? So first you look for the start codon. Now you're going to do this in an activity this week. Yep, I know, super fun. And the first thing you're going to do is circle the start codon. If you like colored pencils or pens, may I recommend green for start, for go. All right. And then what I like to do when I'm uh, reading mRNA and, and translating RNA is I like to oh, put the polypeptide there so I know, or put the amino acid there so I know which one it starts with. And then either circle or just put like brackets around the codons because otherwise it's really easy to lose track of where you are. Okay. So here I drew circles around the other ones until you get to the stop codon. So if you go back to our table here, where are we here? Notice there are three stop codons. Okay. And again, you do not have to memorize what they are. Um, UAA, UAG, UGA, these are all stop codons. Once an amino, once the ribosome gets to the stop codon, it stops. Even if that's because of a mutation, doesn't matter. Ribosomes don't know intention at all. All they can do is read what is in front of them. They get to a UGA or an, a UAA or a UAG, they stop. All right, and then doesn't matter. The rest of this doesn't get translated doesn't matter what it is, okay? You stop at the stop codon. So here, then you would go look back at that diagram. Oh wait, here it is. And see what do all of these make? So the next codon after methionine is CAG. So you would go to the C, the big row, go across to the A column. CAG is glutamine. So I always use these three letter codes, okay? Um, there are single letter codes as well, which we're not gonna deal with, okay? And don't worry about spelling out the amino acids, just use the three letter codes, it's a lot easier. Okay, next one up, AAC. Start with the A row, go across to the A column, AAC, asparagine, ASN, okay? Same, next one, GCG, there we go, alanine, CUC, leucine, and then UGA, stop. Now, when you're doing this on an assignment, please write stop. Okay. So I know that you know that, that you stopped. Um, there is no amino acid called stop and there is no amino acid associated with these stop codons, but write stop so that I know that you know. Okay. So how does this happen? What? Okay. So here's our ribosome. The ribosome is actually made out of two subsections, which only bind together when they bind to an mRNA. Otherwise, they're floating around by themselves. Um, an mRNA comes by, the ribosomes bind together, they bind to the mRNA, they start reading along till they get to the start codon. Once they get to the start codon, AUG, 
another strand of RNA called a tRNA or a transfer RNA comes along and binds to the mRNA. So the tRNA has a little section of it that complementary base pairs to the codon, and it's called the anticodon because it has the, kind of the reverse, the complementary of it. It has that at one end. On the other end, it has a spot to carry an amino acid. And the ribosome is going to act as an enzyme. Now, the ribosome is itself made of RNA. Yes, so we have three kinds of RNA working here. We've got mRNA, the messenger, tRNA, the tra that's transferring the amino acid, and the ribosome, which is actually rRNA. I know. And it acts as an enzyme, and it creates a peptide bond between the amino acids. Uh, yes. I don't know. Okay. So here's a tRNA. Like I said, it's RNA. It's got a sugar phosphate backbone and bases. Uh, it can fold on itself to complementary base pair and create double strands. And so it folds into this 3D shape with the anticodon exposed at one end and the amino acid attachment site at the other end. Okay. All right, so the ribosome binds the mRNA at the start codon. A tRNA with a methionine comes along, binds to the ribosome and the mRNA, and then the ribosome actually pushes the mRNA along so it can get to the next codon. Another tRNA comes, binds to that codon. The ribosome creates a peptide bond between the two. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, so again, we have this initiation where the mRNA binds, elongation, where the ribosome continues reading until it gets to the stop codon, and then termination when it gets to the stop codon and it releases the, RA, the uh, polypeptide or the protein. Um, and the elongation ends at the stop codon. So there's no amino acid, there's no tRNA, nothing to do, we're done let go. All right. So that is how we get from DNA, RNA to an actual protein made inside your cell. Transcribe the DNA, translate the RNA by reading the three letter codons, each of which codes for an amino acid. All right. Up next, we're going to review. Actually, I'll just do this. Okay. We got transcription happening inside the nucleus. That's the other thing that's important to remember. Transcription happens in the nucleus. RNA polymerase makes an RNA All right, that gets processed into mRNA. It goes out into the, the mRNA goes out into the cytoplasm. Uh, and the um, amino acid gets attached to the tRNA with, of course, an enzyme. There's always an enzyme. The ribosome reads the mRNA. The tRNAs come along and uh, transfer the amino acids. The ribosome makes the peptide bonds, creating a strand of amino acids until it gets to the stop codon, and then our polypeptide is done. Okay, in the next one, we'll talk about what happens when things go wrong.